Welcome to the video on molecular polarity and Lewis structures. We're going to start by talking about drawing Lewis structures and when we talk about drawing Lewis structures we're going to focus on the octet rule and why that is important. So to start off as I discussed in a previous video uh, Lewis structures are just representations of molecules showing all of the valence electrons both bonding and non-bonding. So Lewis structures are very helpful for us to actually see a molecule and observe how it bonds with other atoms. When we draw Lewis structures it's very important that we follow the octet rule. So the most important requirement is that the atoms achieve this noble gas electron configuration. What that means is they need eight valence electrons. So when we're thinking about valence electrons, just remember, is it closer to zero or to eight? Because if it's closer to zero, that becomes like the noble gas before it. If the atom is closer to eight valence electrons, then it's going to gain that many more electrons to become stable. So when we look at Lewis structures, we're going to focus on single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds. So single bonds, um, each atom contributes one electron to the bond. So a single bond contains two electrons. Each atom shares one to the bond. Double bonds have four electrons, so each atom contributes two. And then we have triple bonds when each contributes three, which means there are six electrons total. Um, sometimes we'll have what's called a coordinate bond. Um, this becomes much more important later when we start talking about ligands, um, but coordinate bonds occur when one atom actually contributes both electrons to a bond. So before we actually get into drawing the Lewis structures, it's important to know some common bonding patterns. So some common bonding patterns are that carbon can form four bonds and it wants zero lone pairs. So carbon um, will form four bonds, whether that means four single or um, two double bonds or maybe a single bond and a triple bond um, or two single and a double whatever it may be carbon wants to form four bonds um, nitrogen would like to form three bonds with a lone pair okay, so down here you can see nitrogen will form three bonds um, and contain a lone pair oxygen it's two and two so two bonds and two lone pairs um, hydrogen and halogens will only form one bond Beryllium, okay, I know beryllium is a metal, but sometimes beryllium will covalently bond because it is so small. Um, that will form two bonds and no lone pairs. So this, beryllium is one exception. Boron is another exception. It only needs six electrons to be stable. So boron actually will only form three bonds and have no lone pairs. So these are just some common patterns. Now there are times when nitrogen might form four bonds um, and so it might not have the lone pair, and that is fine. These are just common patterns that typically you will see. So to write Lewis structures, this is on the note sheet that you have, but please make sure that you add any important information um, or write any questions down that you have. So the first thing you want to do when writing Lewis structures is find the sum of valence electrons of all of the atoms, uh, either in the molecule or in the polyatomic ion. So add up all of your valence electrons. Remember, look at the group number. So in the case of phosphorus, it's in group five. So it has five valence electrons plus three times seven, because there are three chlorines. Each chlorine has seven. So you add these up, that's 26 valence electrons. Um, if it's an anion, okay, add one electron for each negative charge. If it's a cation, subtract one electron for each positive charge. And then we're going to start to just draw the skeleton of the Lewis structure. So you're going to put the central atom first. The central atom is typically the least electronegative atom um, that isn't hydrogen. Or if carbon is there, um, carbon is always the central atom. Um, and another thing that you can make note of is that hydrogen is never central. Halogens are typically terminal, which means they're on the outside. Um, and then we'll talk about some other uh, exceptions a little bit later. So typically the atom that you have that's single, in this case P, 
is in the center. And then connect the outer atoms to the central by single bonds. So that's going to be the first thing that you're going to do. And keep track of the electrons as you're drawing in bonds, right? So here's 2, 4, 6. So 26 valence minus 6. That's 20 electrons. Okay, then fill the octets of the outer atoms. So fill the octets of the outer. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8 for chlorine. This is full. Same here, same here. So we just added 18 electrons. So let's subtract that. Right, keeping track of our electrons means we have two electrons left. Um, so then what we want to do is fill the octet of the central. So just do another quick check. Right, 8 on each chlorine. This phosphorus, remember these two that are in the bond go to both atoms. So phosphorus now has 2, 4, 6, 8. So phosphorus is also full in terms of the octet. Um, if you run out of electrons before the central atom has an octet, then we have to form multiple bonds until it does. Um, multiple bonds occur with carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Okay, remember cons, C-O-N-S. Carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and sulfur. Okay, if you want to determine if you're going to have multiple bonds before you even draw the Lewis structure, if you remember, you can use what's called the 6n plus 2 rule. n is the number of atoms other than hydrogen. So n represents your number of heavy atoms, anything except for hydrogen. So let's say for PCl3, right, n would be 4. Four atoms, not hydrogen. So that would be 6 times 4 is 24 plus 2. That's 26. So if your total number of valence electrons equals 6n plus 2, you have only single bonds. If your total valence is 2 less than 6n plus 2, you're going to have a double bond. Right? You need two more electrons somewhere. If your total valence is 4 less than 6n plus 2, you have two double bonds or one triple. So this is just a way to know if you have multiple bonds without drawing. Use the 6n plus 2 rule. Um, again, multiple bonds only happen with C, O, N, or S. Okay, so what we're going to look at are two handouts. So this is the handwritten one from Mrs. Fallon. Um, notice this is everything that we've gone through. Right? It's just another summary um, on drawing your Lewis structures. So remember, your least electronegative atom is the central. If carbon is present, it's always central. If hydrogen is present, it is never central. And then keep your atom as symmetric as possible. Um, remember the difference between bonding pair and lone pair. Right? Bonding pair are the electrons that are within the bond. Lone pairs are the ones that are outside, that are not included in bonding. And then as you go through on the back of this handout, you have your cons and your 6n plus 2, and then you have single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds. Remember, triple is the strongest, single is the weakest. And then you also have the Lewis Structures handout. So you have two uh, handouts to help you. This also summarizes, it's just typed instead, um, but notice here in this table you have the number of bonds formed and each group of elements. And then at the very bottom you have some exceptions to the octet rule. So like I said, group 3 with boron only needs 6 electrons. Um, you can also have what's called an expanded octet, and we'll focus more on expanded octet when we look at um, shapes. But if you have extra electrons, um, the central atom will have the expanded octet. So if you ever have extra electrons after you've placed all of the valence electrons to fill the octet of the outer atoms, you're going to place any extra electrons on the central. Okay, so this is okay because typically um, this is due to larger molecules that have the d orbitals, so it can actually hold an expanded octet. But remember that the expanded octet only happens on the central atom. Okay, so that is drawing our uh, Lewis structures. Now we're just going to quickly look at molecular polarity, and we're going to come back to this when we look at shapes. 
So molecules, so the overall molecule will be polar if your bonds are polar and the molecule is not symmetric. Okay, if the molecule is symmetric, it's going to be nonpolar. Okay, so if you have a symmetric molecule, that will be nonpolar. However, if it's not symmetric, then we can consider polarity. So if we have something that is linear, a trigonal planar, tetrahedral, any of these shapes, a, these are symmetric, assuming that all of your outer atoms are the same. Okay, if one of, one of these outer atoms is different, then that will change if the molecule will be polar. Okay, so looking at carbon dioxide, okay, the first thing to look at is if the bonds are polar. Okay, so the CO bond, that is polar. So each CO bond is polar. That's the first thing to check off the list. Okay, bonds are polar, check. But carbon dioxide, go through your central atom, okay, almost think about it as drawing a line right down the center. Okay, can I flip this side on to the right side? And the answer is yes. That makes this symmetric, which means carbon dioxide is not polar. Okay, so then looking at BF3. Okay, so we have um, BF3 here. So our boron atom is positive, our F is negative, right? Anything with fluorine will be polar. But what we have to look at now is, let's see if it's symmetric. So if I draw a line straight down, let's pretend that's, you know, straight. Yeah, that's a little better. Um, the question is, could you fold this left side onto the right? Okay, or if I draw a line this way, right? Can I fold the top onto the bottom? And the answer is yes. Okay, so even though the BF3 bonds are polar, um, the molecule is symmetric, so it's not polar. Okay, then we look at HBF2. Okay, so again, okay, we have the boron atom that's positive, our F atoms are negative, but it is not symmetric. Now you might say, well, Miss Carney, look, I can draw a line right down here through the center and that'll flip over, right? Left flips over onto the right. Well, what if I draw it this way, right? You have to be able to draw your line any way through one of the bonds in order to determine polarity. So because if I drew my line here, right, hydrogen will not flip onto fluorine. So this is not symmetric, which makes this polar. Okay, so methane, would you consider methane polar? Okay, I want you to just think about that. Okay, is methane polar? And I want you to be able to tell me why or why not? Okay, well, methane is symmetric. Okay, CH4, it's tetrahedral. This is perfectly symmetric. Because it is perfectly symmetric, okay, because it's perfectly symmetric, it's not polar. Another way to look is your carbon hydrogen bond is also nonpolar. This carbon hydrogen bond is nonpolar. Therefore, methane could never be polar. Okay, what about CH3F? Well, first compare bonds, right? Do you have one polar bond? Well, this carbon fluorine bond, that's polar. The other three aren't, but this one is. And okay, then ask yourself, is this symmetric? Okay, well, this is not symmetric because I have this lone fluorine atom bonded to carbon. That really messes up this entire symmetry, which means this will be a polar molecule because I could think of this as a partial negative up on the fluorine because it's so electronegative, a partial positive all down here on the bottom. 
that makes this polar. So that is it when it comes to Lewis structures and polarity. Um, please make sure if you have any questions, you let me know. Um, but we will practice drawing Lewis structures quite a bit in class. Um, we'll start talking about polarity, um, but we will continue talking much more about polarity uh, when we get into shapes of molecules.